Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn how to configure and verify RIP with a lab demo. So I've got the lab topology open here. We've got five routers, R1 to R5, and you can see that all of the interfaces begin with a 10, apart from this interface on R4, interface fast 3 slash 0, which is going out to the internet. We'll configure that one a little bit later. So for now, let's configure all of the internal networks that all start with 10. So I'm going to configure that on all of the different routers. Actually, before I do that, let's just check and see that there's no routing protocols running on here already. So I'll do a show IP protocols, and you can see there's no routing protocols running. And if I do a show IP route, it's just the connected and the local routes. So I want to configure RIP on all of the different routers. It's going to be the same commands on each one. So rather than typing it in on each router each time, I'm going to use WordPad and I'm going to copy and paste from there. So let's go to WordPad and the commands are router rip. I'm going to run version 2. I want to do no auto summary. I don't want to do automatic summarization at the classful boundaries. And it's going to be network 10.0.0.0 on each router. So, and actually let's do a config T at the start to save me typing that in each time. And I will copy and paste this into each router. So I'll start on R1, then R2, R3, R4, and R5. And it'll take a minute or so for the routers to converge. So let's just check the show IP protocols first. And this is on R5. I can see that RIP is running now and it's routing for the 10.0 networks. And if I do a show IP route, let's see if we've got RIP routes in the routing table yet. Yes, we do. I can see my connected and my local routes. And on R5, I can see routes for the, the 10.1 networks and individual routes for all of the different 10.0 networks as well. If I go back to the topology diagram, on R1, I should see connected and local routes for the 10.0 networks and routes learned via RIP for the 10.1 networks. So let's verify that. I'll do a show IP route on R1, and I can see I've got all of those individual 10.1 networks learned through RIP. In the routing table, I can see that the administrative distance is 120, which is the standard AD for RIP and I can see how many hops away it is as well. Going back to the topology diagram again, I should have a route for the 10.1.2.0 slash 24 network. I could go along the top path, but that would be one, two, three hops, or the bottom path, which is only two hops. So it's gonna go out the bottom path, out interface fast three slash zero and the next hop address should be 10.0.3.2 with a hop count of two so let's verify that and i can see there's learn through rip there's the 10.1.2.0 slash 24 network the hop count is two and it's via r5 at 10.0.3.2 out the fast ethernet 3 slash o interface so that was a basic configuration for rip i've now got reachability between all of my different internal networks the next thing i'll configure is summarization because you can see on r1 here that we've got all of the individual 10.1 networks listed separately if I have a look back at the topology diagram, 
I can see that all of the 10.1 networks are available through either R2 or R5. So on R2 and R5, I'll configure summarization. I will summarize it to, rather than the individual 10.1.x.x slash 24, I'll summarize it to 10.1.0.0 slash 16. And we do that on the interface that we're advertising the summary right out of. So on fast 0 slash 0 on R2 and fast 3 slash 0 on R5, I'll do that summary 10.1.0.0 slash 16 route. I also want to do summarization in the opposite direction as well. So you can see that all of the 10.0.x.x networks are available out the right hand side on R2 and R5. So I interface fast 1 slash 0 on R2 and fast 2 slash 0 on R5. I'll advertise those as a summary address of 10.0.0.0 slash 16 and that will go to R3 and R4. So let's do that on R2 first. So I'll jump onto its command line. And that was the right hand side interface on R2 was interface fast 0 slash 0. This is the one that's facing R1. And I want to advertise the 10.1 networks out this interface. So the command is IP summary address. I'll use tab completion for that. It's for the RIP protocol. And that was the 10.1.0.0 networks. And I'll advertise it as a slash 16. So that's 255.255.0.0. In the opposite direction, that was on interface fast 1 slash 0. And IP summary address RIP 10.0.0.0. 255.255.0.0. So that is R2 done. I also need to do R5. So I'll go to global configuration. On R5, the interface facing R1 is interface fast 3 slash 0. And I want to do IP summary address RIP the 10.1.0.0 networks 255.255.0.0. And in the other direction, it was interface fast 2 slash 0, which is facing over to the left. And that's going to be IP summary address RIP 10.0.0.0, 255.255.0.0. Okay, so that's my summary routes configured on R2 and R5. So let's check this is working now. So I'll go back on to R1 and what i'll do is i'm going to restart rip here normally in a production environment you wouldn't want to do that obviously because you would lose your routes you would just wait for rip to reconverge but that can take a few minutes so to speed things up here i'll say config t and i'll do a no router rip and then router rip version 2 no auto summary and network 10.0.0.0 so i just restarted rip there just to force it to converge immediately and now if i do a show ip route you see that rather than having all those individual 10.1.x.x slash 24 networks i've got a route for 10.1.0.0 slash 16 and the individual networks are now removed from the routing table if we go back to the topology diagram you see that when I did a summary route on R2 and R5, well, it's one hop from R1 to both of those. So that's an equal cost, it's equal hop count, which is the RIP metric. So both of those go into the routing table and R1 will do equal cost load balancing over both of them. So that's why you can see for 10.1.0.0 slash 16, I've got two routes which have both got a hop count of one one is going out fast three slash zero to 10.0.3.2 which is on r5 the other one is out fast zero slash zero to 10.0.0.2 which is r2 okay so that was our summarization configured last thing i want to do is to give internet connectivity everywhere. So on R4, 
we've got a connection out to the service provider at 203.0.113.2. So in R4, I will add a default static route going out to the service provider, and I'll then inject that into RIP so that all of my other routers learn about it. So let's go on to R4. And I want to do an IP route for 0 .0 .0 .0, 0.0.0.0, 0.0.0.0. So it's a default static route. And the next hop address was 203.0.113.2 at the service provider. Now I could go on to all of my other routers and also configure a static default route on all of those as well. But to save me all that admin work, instead I'll inject it into RIP on R4. So the command to do that is router rip and then default dash information originate. And that will inject it into rip. And if I go back onto R1 again, and I'll just restart rip on here again. So let me copy my config, go back onto R1 config t i'll do a no router rip and then oops restart rip again i must have not copied that correctly i'll just type it in okay so router rip version 2 no auto summary network 10.0.0.0 and then if i do a show ip route it still needs to have gone through the other routers as well so let's see if it's showing up yet and there I can see it's in RIP. I've got a default static route and it's going to the next hop of 10.0.3.2, which is on R5, out interface fast 3 slash 0. If I also look at R2 and do a show IP route there as well, I can also see that that default route has been propagated throughout my network. Oh, one last thing that I want to do is I also, let's say that I want my routers to have a route to that 203 network. Let's go back to the topology diagram. So let's say I want all of my other routers to have a route to the 203.0.113 network. That's not happening right now because I didn't have a network statement configured for that on R4. So we'll add that with a network statement, but I don't want to advertise my internal network information out to the service provider. So I'm going to make interface fast 3 slash 0 on R4 a passive interface. So that's the last thing to do. So let's go on to R4 again. And under router rip, I will say passive interface fast and it was 3 slash 0 and then network 203.0.113.0 okay that's done now and let's go back on to R1 again and so you see that previously I did not have a route for the 203 network on R1. It might not have converged yet, so let's do the same again. Let's restart RIP. So no router RIP, router RIP, version 2, no auto summary without a typo, and network 10.0.0.0. And if I do a show IP route now, hopefully there's my route for the 203.0 network but the service provider router won't learn any of our internal routes because if i go back to the topology diagram again on fast 3 slash 0 and r4 i made that a passive interface so r4 is not going to advertise any rip routes out of that interface okay that was it that was our rip configuration and verification I'll see you in the next section where we'll move on to EIGRP. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.